My name is Brian Kelly, and I'm a resident in Spruce Creek Air Park and a pilot for United Airlines. And uh, the project behind me is a, is a Vans RV8 fitted with a Rotec R3600 radial engine. And uh, the engine's 150 horsepower and fits the, the engineering parameters of the aircraft as far as weight and power output. And so we thought it was a good fit for a, uh, an alternative engine modification to the airframe. The idea formulated in that I wanted to do something special to the RV-8. Uh, this is the, the second RV-8 I've been involved with. first one was my dad's. And um, I wanted to just do something that was going to be special. And, and I love radial engines, always have. And I've been following the Rotec products uh, and since, really since their inception. And when they came out with the nine-cylinder radial engine, I was looking at the specifications one day and found out that the, the diameter of the engine is actually the same as the width of a standard Lycoming engine. One of the unique challenges that I had to deal with with this aircraft was the fact that it has short gear legs. And with the short gear legs, I couldn't get a long prop. This is a geared engine. And with a geared engine, the Rotec can swing up to, I think, just over an 80-inch propeller. And I don't have the ground clearance for that. And what you need with a geared engine with a lower RPM is Reynolds numbers at the tip of the propeller. And in order to get that, you need length. So since I can't get that length, I needed to go with a constant speed prop. It's not a, a drilled engine, and so I had to go electric. And uh, GT was, was really good at, at engineering everything that I needed to make the, the, the project go. And the, pro the prop is actually on its way. Another unique challenge that I had to deal with was the fact that I was going from an Australian engine with an American adapter to an Italian prop. And it should work just fine. All the, all the engineering parameters say it will work just fine, but it's been, it's been a fun project. A big part of the project for me was to execute really what EAA stands for, and that's, uh, that is education and recreation. That's the whole point of experimental building. And for me, this was a great recreational project, but it was very educational at the, at the same time. This is my second airplane I've been involved with, and it still provided a great challenge. The Cowling, in order to, uh, in order to mitigate aerodynamic losses, we, we did a lot of work to, to try to make it as, uh, as, as low drag as possible. One of the things that we had to do was create a divergent duct inside. And you'll see that there's a spinner fairing. This spinner fairing goes from the spinner back to the engine. And then inside, you'll see there's a nice smooth curve all the way to the edge of the cowling. And what that does is it takes the high speed, low pressure air inside or outside. And then it, as it expands in the cowling, it slows down. The pressure rises, allows the air to go through the cylinders slowly heat up and then it's squeezed out the back. We have uh, ducting that goes out the back of the engine as well to accelerate it. The Tech Counselor Program, Flight Advisor Program have been invaluable to this project. Um, in Spruce Creek we have a, a very large network of experience and I rely on that experience heavily because even though I've worked on a lot of airplanes in the past and have done some home building, I don't know all the answers and it's very easy to miss something. So a lot of the times I'll have tech counselors come by the hangar during the process of the build to check on things and to look over the aircraft to make sure that I'm not missing something because it's very easy even for a professional to miss something quite obvious. In order to get the engine to fit to the fuselage, we had to raise the firewall and lower it a little bit. And so everything from this upper longeron up all the way to the tail is new. Um, this is a new skin. I had to fabricate my own composite baggage door to, to fit. Um, the turtle deck is a raised turtle deck because the full teardrop canopy that the RV typically has it kind of more looked like a yak than I want than, a, than an F6F Hellcat, which is what I was going for. Um, and uh, the only thing that, that is stock from the upper lounge run up is the instrument panel. Well, the joy of modifying an airplane is, is in that you get to make it your own. Um, you get to take basically an idea and bring it to fruition. The challenges are the time. The time frame is really extended quite a bit. And uh, for me, the challenge was not only on the airframe, but at home. I mean, you live your, your project 
yourself and your family lives it with you. One of the things we had to de design and develop for this engine was baffling. Um, the Rotec engines don't come with a set of baffling and really there, haven't, there hasn't been a, a Rotec engine that has had a true full set. So we had to come up with uh, templates and, and bend the metal ourselves. It took about a good month just to design and build the baffling on the engine. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun and uh, would I do it again? No, but I would, I would definitely take on a challenge similar to it. The experience is going to be more like a uh, Warbird than you would typically get out of an RV. Um, your RV8s are kind of called the poor man's Mustang. The RV8R uh, here is the poor man's Hellcat. And so the over-the-nose visibility is reduced and uh, the cockpit configuration is more military-like. My goal is to be different, primarily. My goal is only to be different. Um, in a community such as Spruce Creek, we have probably close to 60 RVs, if not more, and we have more being built. And they're wonderful airframes, but around here they kind of get to be a dime a dozen. There's the same airframe, different paint job, and I just wanted to have something that was going to be different than, than what the community had. Um, it's not designed to be fast. Uh, it's, in fact, I'm down in horsepower, up in drag. But with that being said, it's going to be a fun airplane, and who doesn't love the sound of a radial engine?